Hello everyone, welcome to our DIY series. So our next project is this boring looking wall which only has a TV right now. We will be adding two shelves on the sides and also a fireplace at the bottom of the TV and it will be converted from this to this. For this we have to remove the thermostat and move it to the other side of the wall and also get rid of the switch and the doorbell. So let's start now. We started off by removing the thermostat. The thermostat had to be moved to the other wall so I first unplugged the wires and removed the gang box which was already in there. I made a hole using my drill and I had to fish the wires to the other side of the wall. has been moved to this wall everything working fine next is the doorbell which would be moved to the side wall similar to the thermostat i first removed the doorbell from the front side using my drill again i made a hole and then fished low voltage wire to the other side i bought this wire from home depot i made sure that i had ample wire so that in future if i need to remove the doorbell or replace it i have ample wire the extra i just clipped it to the wall Next we started assembling our Billy bookcase shelves. These are very popular in IKEA. We got two of them and then we got these Augsburg doors that we installed. We put these in place and uh, in fixed them to the wall. Then we took 1x6 boards and attached them to the studs on the wall. We first did some pre-drill holes and then we used construction screws to attach them to the studs. Once that was done, we wanted to give a flush look to the IKEA Billy bookcase. So we got some MDF trim and we put it on the sides and on the edges of the shelf so that it looks thicker. We used construction glue to attach them and once it was attached by the glue, we used a brad nailer to fix them in place. We had to fill in the gap which was above the IKEA Billy bookcase. For that, we used 2x3s and made a frame on top. We had to make sure that it was in the middle because we also had planned to add a light fixture on top and then using a brad nailer and a set square we made sure that the frame is aligned and straight. We used a circular gang box for the lamp fixture which we had planned to use and then using wood screws fix it into the frame. Once this was done, we had little complications because the wall wasn't straight and we had to make few minor adjustments in the frame size. Then we drilled it to the back side of the studs. To cover the frame that we made on top, we used these white boards and we measured and cut them to size using a circular saw. We also had to make holes. This was the first time that uh, Akshat was using the jigsaw. So it took some time, but we figured it out and we got the holes in place for the light fixtures. We then attached it to the frame using brad nails. On the other side, it was a little complicated because of the beam that comes in between. So we had to make a smaller wooden frame to adjust that. And we did that on the fly and we figured it out. We also covered this again with the board. All of these frames were screwed to the back on the studs to place them securely. We also used some more of the MDF to give a flush look. We wanted the fireplace frame to come out by 5 inches, so we used this one shiplap to measure that. Then we started making the side frames and we used the 2x3s to make these frames. We first attached them with brad nailers and once they were done perfectly in the end, we went ahead and used construction screws to secure them in place firmly. We 
had made sure that we had ample support in the middle and putting the frame on the left side wasn't challenging for us and we made sure that we used construction screws and screwed it to the 1x6 which we had attached to the walls it was pretty easy the screws had to go into an angle which was a little challenging but at the end i could screw them easily using my impact driver we decided on making a three switch gang box on one of the bookshelves in which we could control the lights a uh, receptacle and also a hdmi and a usb port for this i started using my multi tool and made a box out of it this gang box was screwed into a small supporting stud which was on the right frame and made sure that it fixes into that opening which i had cut out using my multi tool once i was satisfied i used a brad nailer and made sure that it was in place before i used my construction screws there was a little gap behind one of the frames for that i used a small shim to cover the bottom and to support the baseboards we used some wooden trim it was not as thick as we wanted so we added some extra wood pieces and then we used a brad nailer to put them in place Then we started with the middle frame we used 2 by 6 wood and cut it out into pieces laid them out on the floor and then build them together once the main frame was done we put it in place just to check if it would fit and then we used levelers to put in the shelves for the fireplace for the fireplace we made sure that the fireplace is 18 inches above the floor level We also had put few uh, supportings on the side and also on the back of the fireplace so that it is secured and does not fall behind. The only reason for using a two by six was that the fireplace width was five inches and we wanted a very strong frame for the fireplace and the TV. Once the fireplace frame was in place, we started off with the TV wall mount. We had initially put the TV wall mount on the back wall, but then. it wasn't pulling off so that is the reason we pulled it off from the wall and then we decided to use a 2x6 and attach our tv wall mount on this 2x6 for this we had made a perpendicular frame or l bracket and for this support we had also put in few 2x3 at the back of this board at the end we just filled up the gaps on top and also bottom the frame became very very heavy and we could <laughs> and we managed to put it in place by doing a little juggling on the left side and the right side and finally it was in place once it was in place we screwed it to the side frames that we had made so that they are secure then we checked whether our fireplace would fit and we did some wiring for the light fixtures that we had on top uh we just made sure that all the wires are connected before we started uh for the switch that we had on front where we would have the tv we put that box on one of the frames and then um it would be covered on the side with the ship lap and then we did some initial wiring i made sure that i have a receptacle and also an outlet for hdmi usb and rj45 jack so that everything is hidden behind the tv and we don't get to see any wires please note i am not a um, certified electrician so if you have any doubt please do call a certified electrician now when we were doing this we noticed that uh, to close the glass frame there was a lock that wasn't there on top and because of how the fireplace was placed we couldn't access that so we decided to do something else instead we got some uh, wooden panels and we put it on the side of the frame of the fireplace so that the fireplace would come out a little bit and we would have access to the locks that are on top once that was done we put it in place and we could install the glass frame This fireplace is Dimplex Sierra 48 inches. We then started off with installing the ship lap. We had to make few cuts. We 
you just had to make sure that they fit on the sides where uh, the fireplace or the TV was coming and for the other places we just had to cut them into small pieces and fix them in place uh, with a brad nailer to the back of the frame. If the nails were coming out we used a hammer to put them in place. These are tongue and groove shiplaps so they were very easy to install. We just had to fix them uh, one after the other. Before we closed all of the shiplap, we decided to finish our electrical work first and uh, Akshit went ahead and completed the switches on the right. And then after we were done with the electrical, we decided to close the frame with shiplap. Now it was time to put the baseboards. So for the baseboards, we ran to the Home Depot and checked for the exact design which we already had in our house. We measured and then cut a 45 degree angle. Using construction adhesive and brad nailers, I made sure that everything is in flush. We, were, we are not professional, so there were minor imperfections in this because I was very new to cutting a 45 degree, but we thought that we could fill up these holes later using spackling or wood filler. Then we move on to the boards for the top. We decided to create a frame using these boards. We cut them as per the wall and we cut them in angles as required. We had to cut some in 45 degree angles and we covered the top base so that it looks flush with the wall. We fixed them in place with brad nailers. Then we went ahead and got these wooden corners. We used construction glue to put them in place and then fixed with brad nailers again. This just created a seamless look and framed the whole frame around the shiplap so that the edges of the shiplap were not visible. and then once we have done spackling we will sand, prime and paint. We started off using our Ryobi sander. We used a 220 grit sandpaper, but realized that it was there was a lot of dust which was flying off. So we then moved back to manual sanding block. We removed the fireplace. We thought that it would be very dusty. Then we started with caulking. We did the caulking on the baseboards and on the places where there were gaps like the sides and the top so that it looks flush with the wall and there are no gaps on the sides as well. Then we secured everything with the painter's tape before we started doing the prime and painting, even the floors and the wall. We also used a drop sheet on the floor to cover. This was the primer that we used we decided to do two coats of it first and uh, separately on the cabinet doors as well. This is a shellac based primer and it's set to give a laminate finish. We had to use a foam brush because we were going to use semi-gloss paint 
and even in the crevices and corners we use the foam brush then we went on to use the paint uh, we used the Beharis semi gloss finish we started with the cabinets for the sides we did uh, use a small foam brush and when for the main frame we used a roller foam brush this was a semi gloss finish and we went to home depot to match this color with our existing kitchen cabinet Now it was time to peel the tape, that's the most satisfying part of the process. We then went ahead and put the doors back on the bookshelf. These doors come with an easy installation and with the manual so it was very easy to install them back. We also had these black door handles that we got from Amazon and we put them on the top. They were also very easy to install, we just had to use a drill bit and, and some screws to put them in place. We then went ahead and put all the face plates in place. It was now time to install the light fixtures. The wiring was already done so it was pretty easy. These light fixtures would be controlled by smart switch and also voice enabled. We have a smart home video, we'll leave a link in the description of our smart home too where we have so installed a lot of other smart devices in our home. By this time, the whole fireplace started looking really beautiful. Next was to put in the fireplace in, in its place using the screws provided. And then we just hung the TV on the wall mount and made sure the all the wires were hidden behind the TV. And this is what the final product looked like. It's just wow. Hope you liked the video. This was a, one of the biggest DIY projects which you have ever done and it has turned out to be really fantastic. What do you think Ankita? Yeah, I love this project and it makes our living room look amazing. And we hope you liked our uh, DIY project as well. If you did, please hit the like button and if you want to see more interesting DIYs, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon. And we will see you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye, -bye.